He'll enjoy Oklahoma's wide open spaces. He loves to run and run. Hey, we've crossed the state line. And we've entered our fifth state on Route 66, Oklahoma. This is the small town of Texola, Oklahoma, right on the formerly disputed border, but now very firmly inside the Oklahoma boundary. There is no place like Texola. There's no other place like this place anywhere near this place. So this must be the place. There's a very nice Baptist church in this town and not much else. These are the types of towns where it always feels like Sunday. Once the town was bypassed by the interstate, all the businesses dried up and today, only a few crumbling buildings and even less residents are left to tell the tale. Here's something interesting though. I saw a sign right back there pointing this way for the historic jail. Now that is something. How'd you like to serve time in there, huh? Whoa, this reminds me of my time in Shawshank. Here's some displays about Jesse James and Butch Cassidy and some other outlaws. I don't know that any of them particularly were locked up in this jail, but it's Definitely an old timey, old western style calaboose, as they would say. Here's what's weird. Is this a gas or electric heater? And it's inside of this iron framework. Were they protecting the heater from the prisoners or the prisoners from the heater? And weirdest of all is this outside that I at first thought was a tombstone, but apparently it is a memorial for the Texola seniors of 1938. Good year. Seems like an odd place to put it right here next to the jail. Maybe they were in trouble a lot. I always like to circle around every small town before I leave it, just in case I missed anything. You can definitely tell that at one time Texola was a busier place, but now even the very few buildings left from its Main Street USA era are hidden behind the trees. See it back there? This building here is literally surrounded by this tree. Sort of looks like an old Phillips 66 station, one of those little dollhouse ones. What do you guys think? You can see there's a tree on this corner, a tree on this corner, and one behind that's actually taken down the back corner of the building. I don't know that this building is long for this world. Well, it doesn't seem like there's all that much to do in this town, so I suppose we'll turn back Back onto old Route 66 and hit the road. I'm really excited to be back in Oklahoma. I've always loved this state. It is very, very beautiful. Oh, it's not far to our next town here. And this one looks a little more substantial. Welcome to Eric, Oklahoma. Looks like plenty of people still live in Eric, and that includes living at the old Mission Revival style. West Winds Motel. The bucking Bronco on that neon sign is fading away rather quickly. This place is on the National Register of Historic Places and is now a private residence. You gotta admit, that'd be a unique way of living. Coming through town, I saw a lot of cute little houses with Route 66 signs in the windows. Clearly, people here are very proud of their Route 66 heritage. Look at this old restaurant. That is a very unique building. Looks like it used to be a bar, but now is nothing. Hopefully, it becomes something again. Wow, how about that? There's a lot more to downtown Eric than I was expecting. And apparently Eric is a very musical town because Route 66 here is renamed Roger Miller Boulevard. Roger Miller wrote such hits as King of the Road and Dang Me. And it looks like Main Street has been renamed Sheb Woolley Street. He's the guy that wrote One Odd One Legged Flying Purple People Leader. And from the looks of it, this was both of their hometowns. Check it out. There's a museum on each corner here. I suppose we might as well start with the Roger Miller one. Normally they don't allow cameras in this museum, but they're allowing me to get a few clips. I'll be honest with you, I've never really heard of Roger Miller. But this place has his motorcycle, some of his very snazzy outfits, and it's really making me want to check out his music, especially the fact that I just learned that Roger Miller wrote the songs for Big River. You guys know I'm a huge Mark Twain fan, so that scores Roger a lot of points with me. Well, that was very cool and very unexpected. After all, you don't travel to see things you've seen before. I like learning about new things. And now to cross the street and check out the 100th Meridian Museum. This is the old First National Bank. Oh, I can't make a withdrawal though, huh? But I can take a peek in the back. It's the <laughs> iPhone of the past, the old adding machine. I'd love to have one of those. Full of money. Now I'm inside of the vault. So this is where all of Eric's treasures are kept, huh? <laughs> See why they keep this in here. Yeah. It's just a wee bit terrifying. The vault. Yeah. And stand on uh, that round part. Okay. Stand on the round part. Yeah. Put one of my hands here. Yeah, so that you're holding it down. Okay. Now crank it. <laughs> Is that a tornado siren? 
fire department. That was so satisfying. Okay, now making our Go way upstairs in the old bank. This, whoa, this is a little haunted looking. Oh, how about that? Whoa. The old combination dentist office and beauty parlor, AKA torture chamber. Look at this, I love these homegrown, hometown museums. You got a gurney back there, a whole bunch of trophies. Look at these old fans to keep you cool. And they have a little advertising on them. Oh, air conditioned ambulance service. <laughs> Ooh. Man, how would you like to have your teeth drilled on by a contraption like that? Ooh. Ooh. Remind me not to complain about my dentist's office. <laughs> Let's see what else is back here. Wow, the last time I was in a building like this was maybe Virginia City, Nevada. My favorite part of this is how unrestored it is. This must have been the old lawyer's office they were talking about. Here's William T. Bingham's law degree. And these might be his books. I wonder if these here are his chaps. Oh, check out the old one light bulb to read those books by. This place is awesome. Oh, and how about these old traffic lights? That is amazing. I don't know what in the world's going on here. What is happening? Even this guy over here looks confused. Hashtag art. Now this feels weird. I think we've just walked into someone's bedroom up here. Look at that old wheelchair and this old rope mattress. And how about this, huh? I don't need to tell you guys what this is for. <laughs> That's the party. Wow, old Thomas Edison wax cylinders. This was the very earliest type of home records. Thomas Edison actually recorded Mark Twain on some of these, but they went missing and they've never been found. Look at that, old typewriters and a very early Tape recorder. I love how random some of this. Oh my gosh. Oh, that actually scared me. Oh, the sign about the dress is not making it any better. <laughs> Hi, little Lottie. Died in 1902, huh? Oh, we're just gonna leave that right there. Like they said downstairs, the museum is a work in progress, but I kind of like it in its unfinished state. I love all the old advertising and these wooden boxes. All this old farming equipment and these shipping crates Ugh, are so cool. That I don't like. I gotta be honest with you. That thing gives me the creeps. I feel like she's gonna look at me. She's not looking at me, is she? She's not looking at me, is she? I'd rather hang out in this chair than go back in there. Not this chair, though. I'd rather be locked in there with Lottie and have to suffer that. I've never just been left alone in rooms full of stuff like this. Now that was an experience. And then I came downstairs and no one was here. Where did everybody go? Do you know where they went? Help me out here, scary hands. I gotta leave. It's like night at the museum, only hopefully none of these things come to life. Especially not those. I highly recommend the 100th Meridian Museum. I've just been told that now I need to come down the street to see the store of Harley Russell, the self-described Oklahoma redneck. Whoa, this looks awesome. It's a store that doesn't sell anything and Harley supposedly was the inspiration for the voice of Mater. Whoa, this is a very cool looking place. Welcome to Eric, Oklahoma, the redneck capital of the world. Yee-haw, how about that? The American pickers would have a field day with this place. Oh, Harley's down over here. I am very excited and a little nervous about this. Tell them to take all the photos they want. I have accidentally joined a group of European tourists visiting here. We have come to see the Redneck Castle. As Harley just said, this is where all the mentally deranged people like him live. Whoa, he's not kidding about this being a castle. Wow. This is the Redneck Castle slash sanitarium. Okay, we're gonna make it through here right quick. Then we're gonna go over and have a cold beer, maybe smoke a cigarette or something if you got something better than that. <laughs> we're gonna get our bumps, kicks, grass, tricks, dips, and big on 66, and then we're gonna say goodbye. But right now, we're just now starting, and I'll tell you what, I'm gonna ride you all the way, mama. What? Wow. How about this? Wow. Uh, here's to all you guys. 
I tell you for sure, it don't get no better than this. Yeehaw, guys. Yeehaw. Yeehaw. It's so funny. Yeehaw. The American Pickers would have oh, a field day with this. Oh, Amazing. Oh, we are now entering the Redneck Kitchen. How about that? Not many people would open up their house like this. Oh, a new friend. How about that? This is the belly of the beast in here, huh? The lair. <laughs> Let's go, let's move on. We're gonna go over to the Sand Hills Curiosity Shop, and this is where we're gonna get our bumps, kicks, grinds, tricks, dicks, and big on 66. Let's go for the show, guys. We've gotta move on. You mean that wasn't the show? Hey, on three, yeehaw! One, two, three, yeehaw! Now that's a fun pig. This store that sells nothing is called the Sand Hills Curiosity Shop. I think the German tourists and I are in for another treat. What? Uh Place. How about this? Get in here! Take all the photos you want! Uh, just to make a long story short, this is where you're gonna get your bumps, kicks, grinds, tricks, kicks, and big tricks on 66. Now, if you guys smoke, you're welcome to smoke in here. There are no rules, regulations, government policies of any kind in here, and nothing is illegal. Okay? I tell you what, it can make you feel pretty damn good when you're 71 years old. For sure, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get baby boy a dadgum pop there. That's me. The 66 sign posted in the state of Oklahoma, 1926. The first Route 66 sign from Oklahoma. This guy, this act, this. What kind of work do you do? Work? What kind? Why of are you work? swearing at me like that? This is awesome. So are you guys ready to cruise some other road? Yeah. Let's get out there in that car, let's the motorcycle, turn the key on, put the pedal to the metal, throw it in gear, and let's leave rubber all the way down Route 66. <laughs> Chicago to LA, more than 2,000 miles all the way. But get your kicks on Route 66. Well, you go through St. Louis and Joplin, Missouri, and Oklahoma City, she's You get hit to this tiny drill. You may go California trail. Get your kicks on Route 66. Get your kicks on Route 66. Get your kicks on Route 66. You guys aren't ready for that yet, but your kids are gonna love it. Oh, 
and no, I'm not part of this community. Okay. I can assure you that right now. Okay. No, you're, I'm, you're the rebel. I'm here about, no, I'm not a rebel. This is my new favorite place ever. <laughs> yeah, what do you think of that, boys? Yeah. Oh, Lordy Mama. Yeah. Ah, fun pick. Thank you very much. It's that been was my great. Pleasure. That was Thank great. You all up, you for your support. <laughs> oh, wow. I've never experienced anything like that in my life. The Sandhills Curiosity Shop. Everyone, I'm trying to figure out where to go next, but I don't know if anything can top that. One, two, three. Yeah! Those German travelers there just learned what America's all about. What that is, I'm not exactly sure. But somehow, it's in that building. You can very easily see how he inspired the voice of Toe Mater. I made it less than 50 miles into Oklahoma and already my mind is blown. Check this out, there are several old stores in town that are still packed full of stuff just sitting in there. I've never heard about this one before, but one that I have heard of is right there off the corner of old Route 66. This is the Bone Break Hardware Store. The family was in the hardware business as far back as the 1800s. And this particular store closed down in the 70s, was locked up, and left here with all of its inventory intact in there. We gotta wave goodbye to our German friends over there. And gaze through the windows here at another era. Look at all of that. The museum next door is trying to get a hold of this place, but with very little success. The family still owns it. And they've just left it here, just like this. Nobody knows what its ultimate fate will be, but that is pretty amazing looking. I had no idea what to expect when I rolled into Eric, Oklahoma, but this town has completely blown my mind. Oklahoma is already turning out so much more wonderfully weird than I had even hoped. I've always loved this state, but today I'm developing a whole new appreciation. Whoa, what is this? Check this out. Oh, this is my favorite thing. Look at this old abandoned piece of original old Route 66. There's the modern version there. And here is the old original part, right alongside the railroad tracks. This is exactly the kind of thing I was hoping to do when I set out on this trip. Driving on an old forgotten portion of the mother road. It occurs to me that now we're in Oklahoma, the home of the Okies. Which means this is the old, original, old school Grapes of Wrath style Route 66. And boy, it's, it's really overgrown. When this was first paved, in the 1920s, and very early 1930s. This was a modern marvel, and look at it now. Just completely abandoned for mile after mile after mile. There's just something about old forgotten parts of Route 66 that I love so much. I can't explain it to you, but walking down these old pieces of highway, I don't know, there's just something Romantic about it. Look at all these beautiful wildflowers, by the way. Side note. As someone who's traveled a lot by road in my time, I don't know, it's just something about standing 
in the footsteps or following in the footsteps of the pioneers of the road. I don't know, something about the last of the great pioneers headed west or something. Of course, it doesn't hurt to know that my grandparents and great-grandparents came down this road to California. There's just something about it that's special. What's cool is that underneath this very early, old school and very thin layer of asphalt, you can see some original Portland cement, perhaps, pavement there. Remember, this was one of the first paved roads across America. They were just figuring out how to do this at all. We are seeing glimpses of the very earliest American highways being invented here. That is so cool. Speaking of the highway, we should probably get going because I have heard a rattlesnake or two way back there. I don't mess around with no snakes. Okay. We are rolling into our next town. Welcome to downtown Sayre, Oklahoma, where Route 66 comes right across Main Street. I was hoping to check out the odd shop here with this windmill right out front, but sadly, it's not only closed, but put up for sale. There is a really great antique shop across the street from which I'd like to purchase everything, including this portrait of Grandma? Grandpa here? But that's not what I'm here for. We don't have a lot of time left today to explore Sayre, Oklahoma, but there is something here at the end of Main Street that I'd like to look at. That down there is the Beckham County Courthouse, and in a shot from this same angle in the movie The Grapes of Wrath, you see the Jode family wagon cruising through this town. So not only is this historical Okies, Dust Bowl, Grapes of Wrath territory, but it was literally used in the movie version too. That is pretty amazing. Doesn't look like Sayre, Oklahoma has changed much since the movie was made. It's a very beautiful small town and one that I wish I had more time to spend in. For now though, I think Oklahoma has blown my mind enough for one day. It might be time to start thinking about finding a hotel to sleep well in. Make sure to check out all the links down below in the description. Thank you very much for watching and coming down Route 66 with me. I'd be awfully lonely without y'all here in the old west. I'll see you tomorrow, friends. Harley, play us out. Okay, we'll see if we can do this. Yesterday. Troubles seem so far away And now it looks as though they're here to stay Oh, I believe in yesterday There's an angel watching over me Oh yesterday Came suddenly Why she had to go I don't know Say, I said, so be wrong. Now, by love, oh, yesterday, yesterday. Love was such an easy game to play And now I need a place to hide away Oh, I, yes I believe in yesterday Oh, I